Hey guys, this is Bharadwaj with Phonorena.com and this is the review of the Motorola Moto X. Moto X is the latest smartphone from Motorola to launch in India after the successful Moto G. This offers pure Google experience and was launched with Android 4.4 KitKat out of the box. The Moto X has a more powerful dual-core Snapdragon Crate processor and a better camera. It is definitely better than the Moto G in all the aspects, but is it better than the other smartphones in the similar price range? Let's find out. The first thing you notice is how compact the phone is. Even though it has a 4.7 inch screen, it is incredibly compact thanks to the narrow bezel. Screen to body ratio of the Moto X is 72.12% which is absolutely amazing. Coming to the display, the Moto X has a 4.7 inch 1280x720 pixels edge to edge AMOLED screen at a pixel density of around 316 ppi. It also has Corning Gorilla Glass protection against scratches and falls. Even though the pixel density is slightly lesser than the Moto G, Moto X offers better viewing angles and vibrant colors. Sunlight legibility is pretty good, but the screen is a bit more reflective compared to the Moto G in brightly lit conditions. It has a 2 megapixel front facing camera that is capable of recording videos at 1080p full HD resolution and has the usual set of proximity and ambient light sensors above the display. The Moto X has on screen touch buttons similar to the Moto G and other Nexus devices, and the primary microphone is present below the display. The secondary microphone is present at the top along with the 3.5mm audio jack. The micro USB slot is present at the bottom. The Moto X is curved on the sides similar to the Moto G. It is 10.4mm on its thickest part and is just 5.7mm at its thinnest. On the right side of the phone lies the nano SIM slot. Yes, this is one of the very few Android phones that launched last year with the nano SIM slot after the Asus Pad Phone Infinity. It has tiny patterns on the back that is easily visible unlike the patterns on the Nexus 5. The Moto X actually has three microphones, mainly for the always listening option that we will discuss in the software part. The third microphone is present at the bottom part of the back. It has solid build quality unlike the plastic cover on the Moto G, but the back cover here is not removable. It comes in black, white, red, royal blue and turquoise colors with walnut and teak backs available in India. These wooden back variants are priced at $25,999, about Rs. 2000 costlier than the standard color variants. On the back, there is a 10 megapixel autofocus camera with a chrome ring around it and a single LED flash just below. The camera uses an Omnivision OV10820 1x2.5 inch sensor which produces a pixel size of 1.4 micrometer. It also has a f2.4 aperture lens. The camera UI is simple and has minimal features, but it also has a new feature that lets you twist your hand to open the camera quickly. This uses the new RGB clear color filter that promises better low light imaging. It captures images and videos in 16 by 9 aspect ratio by default and not in 4 to 3 like most other smartphones. Daylight, HDR and macro shots are pretty good, but the colors seem to be muted in all the images. Low light images were slightly better though thanks to the new clear pixel RGBC technology but these low light images still had a lot of noise. So overall we would say the camera is pretty good but it is not up to the mark when compared to the competition. It can record videos at 1080p HD resolution in the MP4 format and since it has a secondary microphone the audio is crisp. Video is good but it is too sharp in our opinion. It can also record slow motion videos in the SLO mode. It actually records the video at 720p HD resolution at 60fps and reduces the frame rate to 1 fourth from the original video to 15fps. Coming to the software part, the phone runs on Android 4.4 KitKat which is completely stock. Since it is stock, similar to the Nexus devices, there is nothing new to say about it. One of the best features in the Moto X is the active display though, this is a Motorola related addition. The Moto G might have a LED notification light on top for notification alerts but the active display is much better than the notification light. It notifies you when you receive a SMS, email or any other alert. You just have to swipe to the top to directly go to the notification or just swipe down to unlock the screen. It also automatically shows the time when you pick up the phone and fades the clock automatically when you put it in your pocket. Since the phone uses an AMOLED display, it lights up only the part where the clock is displayed making it comfortable for the eyes. You can also customize to adjust exactly which apps publish notifications, hide the notifications when using a screen lock and also turn off the notifications when you're sleeping. Another interesting and innovative feature is the touchless control that lets you control your phone hands free by speaking commands. This makes use of all the microphones to listen more clearly. 
This lets you make a call to a person, get directions, ask questions to Google Now and more. There are also options in the settings to confirm before placing a call. The touchless control is powered by a specific NLP in the Moto X8 chipset. Motorola doesn't say up to what extent the touchless control will affect the battery life of the phone, but you can easily turn it off. Out of the 2GB of RAM, you have 1.79GB of usable RAM, out of which 890MB of RAM is free when the phone is idle with some apps running in the background. Only the 16GB variant is available in India, which offers about 12GB of usable storage. Since the OS is stock, you don't get any unwanted apps like the old Motorola phones. You get the usual set of Google apps and the utility apps pre-installed. Moto Assist is one of the few additional apps present in the phone similar to Smart Actions app present in the Moto Racer smartphone. In addition to sleeping mode and meeting mode that was available in the Moto G, this has driving mode that automatically detects when you are driving and reads out your text messages and plays music over the car's Bluetooth once it is connected. It also has the Motorola Migrate app that lets you migrate content from your old phone to the new phone. Just like stock Android, Google Play Music is the only app you have to play audio on and the phone has a decent loudspeaker to play it back. But it could be better though. This lacks a FM receiver so you don't get FM radio that was present in the Moto G. It can also play most video formats in 1080p Full HD resolution using the default player very smoothly. You have the usual set of connectivity features including 3G HSPA+, dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4, LE and GPS. The phone also has NFC and USB on the go support. The Moto X is powered by a 1.73GHz dual-core Qualcomm Snapdragon S4 Pro CPU with great 300 cores, better than the quad-core ARM Cortex CPU used in the Moto G. Performance is snappy without any lag and thanks to 2GB of RAM, multitasking was smooth. It has a 400MHz quad-core Adreno 320 GPU. We tried out some games on the Moto X and the gameplay was smooth and the graphic details were also quite good in most games. Even though it has USB OREG support, it doesn't support the PlayStation 3 controller. Coming to the battery life, the 2200mAh lithium-ion battery offers all-day battery life and even lasts till the next day morning with mixed use. However, if you are a gamer playing intensive games and watch videos for a few hours, the battery will last less than this. Overall, the Moto X is definitely one of the best smartphones under 23999 it excels in performance, battery life and unique software features, but there are some drawbacks like non-removable back cover and just 12GB of usable memory. If you're looking for a smartphone with a large 1080p screen and a Snapdragon 800 processor, this phone is definitely not for you. But if you need a compact smartphone running on the latest version of stock Android under 25,000, this is the best choice out there. To summarize it better, listed here are the pros and cons of this device. And that's about it for the video. Thanks for watching, do let us know what you think in the comment section below. We hope you enjoyed this video, do hit the like button if you did and do hit the subscribe button if you want more videos like these.